We're going to look at Romans chapter 8, and we will read verse 28. We're going to look at Romans chapter 8, and we will read verse 28. It's very sad and disheartening how many people are about to give up on God. So the Holy Spirit is inside a person's heart, and He's the one that works in you in Philippians 2. So we'll look at that verse later. But because of that, what Satan wants to do, the, you got an adversary who wants to attack you. So what he's going to do is try to attack your life. And as he attacks your life, he's going to always put things in your heart. That's why guard your heart. He's going to put things in your heart where you get discouraged, you get depressed, and you give up. So what Satan wants you to do, I want all of you to pay attention. I don't know. This happens to every single person. I mean every single person, so you better remember this. Otherwise, later on when the devil starts attacking you and then you quit coming to church after that, it's because you weren't paying attention and applying. All right, so apply this. Remember this. It might happen in the future. Well, it will happen in the future. Excuse me. Satan's going to put something in your life or in this church, and through that, you think that you can't take it anymore and then you're going to backslide or you're going to give up on God and then eventually quit and even commit suicide some people maybe it's the temptation you're struggling with maybe it's a prayer request you kept praying and you never saw answered maybe it's somebody you kept talking to trying to show them the gospel and that person would not give in maybe it's because you worked so hard in the church to build it up but no one would come into your church trust me I've been through 10 years in the ministry and I know what that's like okay so I'm going to tell you something that will save you from a lot of heartache and problem. This is what I learned. You have to cling, and I mean cling it and claim it. Romans 8. Now, what do you think the verse I'm going to use, which is the most popular verse, one of the most popular ones? Romans 8, 28. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that, now what does it say? Okay, did it say some things? All right, do you believe that verse or do you believe yourself? Do you believe God or do you believe yourself? You believe God, right? If he says all things, when your heart starts saying, but not that thing, when your heart says, oh, God's never going to answer that, that means you just b did not believe all things. Now, remember this, all things, you keep saying this to yourself. Whenever you say, I give up on that thing, then tell yourself this, you don't believe all things. Now, I believed in that strongly, and because I believed in that strongly, I did not quit by the grace of God. It's only Romans 8.28 has been very helpful. Oh, but I've made mistakes in my life. Ah, this is important. Yeah, we all make mistakes, but did it say some things or all things? All things. Okay, it doesn't matter what mistake you made. Okay, God will take care of it and still use you. The evidence is he still gave you breath to breathe in and he expects you to use that breath for his glory. If he gave up on you, he would have taken your life and said, you're done. Now, the thing is this. If he says all things, it doesn't matter what mistake you made. Get up on your feet and do something for God Amen. and just trust in him. Here's the second thing. We're going to look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Philippians 2 and verse 13. Now, I want you to add all these points, not some, but all these points in your heart. If you apply them all in your heart, then it will arm you and I mean arm you against that attack from Satan. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. That matches perfectly with Romans 8.28 because it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. He had a purpose to plan out for you. And what? This verse 13 says, both to will and to do his good pleasure, his purpose. So it's God that what? Works in you. Another thing is this. Who's in charge, you or God? 
God, right? So you tell yourself, am I in charge or is God in charge? God promised he'll make all things work together, including mistakes. And also tell yourself this, who's in charge, you or God? Now, when you think like that, that God's in charge, you can encourage yourself that you can keep living through life and keep fighting or keep going on for Jesus Christ. It's God or you. Now, tell yourself that hundreds of times, all right? It's God in charge or you. So don't worry about it. Stop thinking about, oh, this or that or blah, 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 blah. Stop thinking about it. Who's in charge? You or God? God. Did God create all the universe by just speaking? Okay, if he can do that, can't he take care of a, a little person who's smaller, smaller than the toe of God when the whole earth is his footstool? It's, you're not a problem, okay? You're not a problem that he can't handle. Your problem is not so special. Another thing is this. Here's another important thing. Look at 1 Corinthians. What do you think the verse I'm going to use that's also very popular? Chapter 10 and verse 13. Another thing you got to keep in mind is this. Now, here's the problem with people. This is why people will quit out on God. And when something bad happens, they always go through a sob story. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people in our church who went through hard times. I don't make light of it. But it does bring up a suspicion that you focus so much on that and you are not realizing that this is common to other people as well. Now, I know in your case, you might think that you're very unique and special, but trust me, you might be unique and special in your location among your friends, but there are 200 other people around the world. There are, there are billions of people. There are at least 200 more people who have it worse than you do. Now, don't you think that there's more than 200 people that have it worse than you do? That's pretty obvious. So think about this. It's not just you. That's something important. It's not just you. So it's a sign of weakness. Now, obviously, I don't say that to people when they go through hard times, but this is something you have to say to yourself. You know what prevented me from quitting? I had to think like this every stinking time. All right? You have to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. If you don't think like this, it's not just you, so quit whining about it. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. There's some, there's some Christian out there who doesn't get food to eat, and yet you still have food on the table, and that Christian still goes to church and still reads the Bible and pray. How come you're not? So boo-hoo, boo-hoo, yeah, all right? People might comfort you, but you shouldn't comfort yourself. You should tell yourself, look, this is not just me. There are thousands of other people, and I mean thousands, who have it worse than I do or just the same thing like I went through. The verse says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Not just you. Here's the fourth thing. The fourth thing, I'm going to add it right here. I'm going to use 1 Corinthians 10, 13 again. But the difference is this. This will be A, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the first part. And this is the second part. You know, a lot of people know these verses, but they just don't really apply it, don't they? And that includes Bible-believing Christians who, who think they know all the doctrines straight, and despite of knowing all the doctrines, they'll just boo-hoo on people. Oh, I'm being persecuted. Oh, boo-hoo, no one loves me. And then uh, I teach and preach the Word of God, and people take me for granted. I'm, yeah, Bible-believing teachers and preachers. I'm telling you the truth. They talk and think like that. And this is something they should have known and memorized, but they never applied. What's the second part of that verse? God provides what? The way of escape. Now, you know what your problem is? This is one thing I learn about human nature, and I want you to learn this lesson too. God provides you an escape. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Okay, maybe you thought the reason why that you got so depressed and you're boo-hooing, boo-hooing is because maybe you're by yourself locked up in your house, and then you allow all those depressing thoughts to seep in when you got a car to drive and you got outside to walk. This is not communist North Korea. You can walk outside anytime. You got a church where you can encourage yourself in. You just never took opportunity of that. I mean, the thing about people is this. God provides a way to escape and they just 
don't take it. Oh man, I'm uh, struggling with some with uh, some kind of sexual addiction, etc. Well, then God provided you a way to escape. There is no law forbidding you to cut off television and the internet. See, oh, but I need that for it. See, boom, then you just uh, don't boo-hoo on God on your problem. That's your fault, and I mean your fault. You know what the problem with people is, why they give up? Now, I know this is coming out strong, and I don't want to hurt people who are really hurting out there. But one thing I learned about human nature, because I'm speaking about myself, and I know me really well, and pastoring a lot of people in churches, I notice this, is this. The problem is undoubtedly, as Bob Jones Sr. once quoted, the problem undoubtedly is with you. That's his famous quote. <laughs> don't blame the government. Don't blame Laodicea and apostasy. Don't blame people. Don't blame your mama, your dad, blah, blah, blah. It's you, you, and you. You, you got a brain that can still think and process, so start using your head on, is there a way to escape that I can use? And take it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Let's lo also look at another one. Hebrews 10. <clears throat> you know why you're depressed? I'll tell you why you're depressed. Because you always kept rejecting church. And when people try to tell you to go to church, what do you do? You just keep pushing it away, right? You try to find spiritual reasons to say church is unbiblical. It's like paganism. Or that I can do, by my, I can do well by myself, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Hebrews 10. And it's not 12, excuse me, it's 25. You know one thing I notice what really helps people? Church. Amen. Church. Now, I'm going to be very careful about saying this. The most important thing in your life, the most important thing in your life, is your spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. That will never change. So that can include your Bible reading, your prayer, your walk with God, etc. However, one thing that I notice that's, that's the most important thing in your life. But the number one convenient method that makes you, that easily makes you serve God, the number one thing above Bible reading and prayer is church. That is really important. You know why? Because you're so fleshy that even if you read the Bible and pray, your flesh won't read the Bible and pray. That's why. But when you drag yourself to church, you're enforced to hear whatever pastor so-and-so says. And you got people who encourage you and talk to you, people praying for you, you got songs to sing, you're enforced to do that. That's why it gives you the juice to live for the rest of the week. Think about it. You only go to church once a week. If you skip more than that, or you only attend twice a week, right? You skip more than that, what's going to happen to you? What's going to happen to you? You really honestly think your juice can carry for the next several weeks and months and years? That's why some people including so-called Bible believers, because they haven't been to church for years, they became more crazy, more crazy, more crazy, and start doing weirder and weirder things and get depressed and miserable and give up on God. This is so important. Why? Because look at this verse. <clears throat> Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. See that? Why can't we forsake assembling together? Not just Sunday. You notice any time we assemble. That's what the verse says. Why? Because it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. This is the part, but exhorting one another. See that? You get the people. You get the things in the assembly that feeds you off each other, gives you the energy. And so much the more. It said even more, right? So in reality, two times a week is very poor, you got to understand. We, got, we should be doing this every day you got to understand. So much the more as you see the what? Day approaching. The end. Look, isn't the day approaching? The end's approaching even more and more. That means you should stress church attendance even more than before. you got to understand. There are two more areas that I'm going to mention real briefly. We're not going to turn to there for time's sake. But one of them is faith. And the second thing is prayer. In the book of Matthew, it says, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. A lot of times, the reason why you go through problems in life is when is the last time you pray? Because you fail to ask God for help in something. That's why the Lord's not helping you. Another thing is faith. Ephesians chapter 6. 
How do you shield yourself from the wiles of Satan? Faith. Shield of faith. That's what it said, right? So with that shield of faith, it goes out. You know how you bounce this out? When you believe, Lord, I believe all things work together for good. And it's not just me. There's someone out there that's suffering. And that, yeah, I'm going to drag myself to church. I believe you provided me a way of... See that? When you do that, it bounces off. Amen. You have to believe. If you don't believe, you're, you're, you're going to go down to condemnation very, very soon. Faith is an essential ingredient and foundation you need. That's how you don't give up on God. Now, start applying these, shall you?